We are going to start with unit conversions, uh, and so it's very important to have metric prefixes. And when we do metric prefixes, we got to make sure we have uh, all of our times 10 to the negative or times 10 to the positive, what they all stand for. So we're going to start with nano, which is times 10 to the negative ninth, then micro, which is times 10 to negative sixth. Then milli times 10 to the negative third, and centi, which is times 10 to the negative second. And those are all smaller. And when I say smaller, I mean smaller than our base unit, whether we're using meters, kilograms, or seconds. Uh, then we'll go into things that are larger, like kilo times 10 to the third. And mega was times 10 to the sixth. And giga, which is times 10 to the ninth. And they are all larger than our base unit, which is meters, kilograms, or seconds. So let's try an example. Uh, we are going to take 10 meters and we're going to see how much or how many nanometers that is. And so we have to start with our conversion factor and that's what all these things over here on the left are. They are conversion factors and they and they tell me what to do. So uh, I take my meters and so a one nanometer is one times ten to the negative ninth meters and that allows the meters to be canceled here and then by doing the math I get 1.0 times 10 to the tenth. So basically, by dividing 10 meters by 1 times 10 to the negative ninth meters, I get 1.0 times 10 to the tenth nanometers. So there's a lot of nanometers in one meter. And so emphasizing the idea of smaller and larger, the nano, micro, milli, and centi are all smaller than a meter and so you end up with a larger number. Knowing whether it's knowing whether it's smaller or larger will help you mentally check your, your your answer. So if the nanometer is supposed to be smaller and you're going to meters, you should have a lot of nanometers in a meter or vice versa for the larger kilo, mega or giga uh, prefixes. So in physics, the main thing we concern ourselves with is the MKS system, which is meters, kilograms, and seconds. Uh, and knowing that smaller and larger thing and knowing we're going from meters to kilograms or seconds is very, very important. Those are the things we're going to use in physics. Uh, when we get further along in physics, we're going to use things like a Newton. And a Newton still is made up of something that has to do with the MKS system. In fact, it is a kilogram multiplied by a meter divided by seconds squared. Go back here. And so using the MKS system allows us to, to, to define a Newton. Uh, Isaac Newton came up with this and, and then they named it after him. So, you know, that's just how it works in physics. You figure something out and you get your name figured out, you know, your name as part of a unit. Um, but anyway, That is what we need for unit conversions. So now we're going to move on to motion graphs. The type of graphs we're going to look at are position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. And being an AP Physics C, uh, we are going to deal with acceleration that is going to change over time, something you did not deal with in AP Physics 1. So the good news is we get to figure out how to do that. We're not going to do that at this moment. Uh, but we, are, we will get into that. So we're going to start by looking at some basic graph shapes and we're going to start with a positive acceleration which in anything with acceleration that will be the slope of a velocity versus time graph. So here we have two uh, shapes uh, or velocity versus time graphs. We have a blue line and a green line here. One of them is in the positive axis, one of them is the negative axis, and both of these has a, have a positive acceleration. 
uh, add the axis there and make everything look a little bit better. So we're going to have a positive acceleration. And positive velocity means speeding up, and negative velocity means slowing down. So we have an example of both here. The blue line is an example of an object that starts with a positive velocity and is getting faster. It's going to have more and more positive velocity as it goes down the line there. Uh, so it's, it's, the blue line is speeding up. The green line is starting uh, with a very large negative velocity, which at that point and now it's going towards zero so if it's going towards zero it's going to have a zero velocity so whatever velocity it was it's in a negative direction with a very large number and then it's going towards zero so it must be slowing down to a stop an easy way to look at that is we have a magnitude a very large magnitude of negative velocity that is getting more and more less negative it's getting less negative as it travels towards zero So that object's moving da uh, slowing down and moving backwards is another way of thinking about it, or negative direction. Um, so when we look at a position versus time graph, the slope is velocity. And the, when we look at this, taking the blue line into account, the blue line, which had a positive velocity uh, and a positive acceleration, so we started off uh, not extremely fast and then increased and got more and more fast. And then the green line, we started off very fast, either going backwards or in a negative direction, and then began to slow down. So both of these graphs are concave up. And that happens because they both have a, con uh, uh, I'm sorry, a positive acceleration. So anytime you have a position versus time graph that is concave up, it usually represents, or it, it does represent, a positive acceleration. So now let's take a look at uh, some more graph shapes that happen to deal with uh, negative acceleration. So now we've got all our graphs drawn. We have negative acceleration. So the acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. And change in velocity and change in time is something you learned in AP Physics 1. Uh, moving forward, now that we're going to get into calculus, uh, it's going to be the derivative velocity with respect to time. And, and I know I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. We're not going to get a whole lot of calculus in until uh, about the third unit. But, you know, the, this is for future reference and it's something you can look at. And then the other part is we could look at it as the change in velocity is the integral of acceleration with respect to time. So if we now have a negative acceleration, if we look at the velocity versus time graphs, the red line has a positive velocity or starts with a positive velocity, and the object is slowing down. It's approaching zero. And the green line has a negative velocity, but it's speeding up. It's getting more and more negative. Its magnitude is getting larger in the negative direction. Now looking at the position versus time graph, uh, looking at the red line, we have a, a curve showing the object is accelerating, but it's a negative acceleration, it's concave down. And looking at the beginning of the velocity versus time graph, it has a very large magnitude positive velocity, so at the beginning of our position versus time graph, it is a very steep slope. So it means we have a very large velocity, and as it's slowing down, it gets to zero. So at the very end of our red line, on the position versus time graph, it begins to flatten out and have a slope of zero. And if that, that matches up with our velocity versus time graph, which is pretty much touching zero toward the end of its line. The green line, on the other hand, should be the reverse of that. The green line starts off with a negative slope or, a, you know, a, uh, the, the magnitude of my velocity, even though it's negative, is a small number. 
and it gets more and more negative into a larger number. So we show that it's a you know very non-steep slope at the beginning of the position versus time graph with the green line, and it gets more and more steep as it goes, matching what we see in our velocity versus time graph. Um, velocity from AP Physics 1 is the velocity equals the change in position over the change in time, uh, which is the derivative, uh, derivative of position with respect to time. Um, we have a negative acceleration, and we can see that uh, looking at our acceleration versus time graph, the slope of our velocity versus time graphs are all negative, and the slope of those, the acceleration is the slope of a velocity versus time graph, and also we can see that with a concave graph, we can see concave down acceleration is negative on position versus time, and concave up for position versus time is a positive acceleration. And you can see, you can see from AP1 that we used uh, happy and sad graphs to help us remember which one was which. The happy graphs were positive and the sad graphs were negative. So now we'll look at our kinematic equations. In AP1, I referred to the velocity in these kinematic equations as final velocity and initial velocity. Uh, They're typically written on your your sheet, I forget the name of that, your, your equation sheet, equation chart that they give you for the AP exam uh, is V and V0, where V is the final velocity and V0 is the initial velocity. So we have our three kinematic equations, our very you know common three, the, the big three that we use for kinematic equations uh, here, where V equals V0 plus AT, and V squared equals V0 squared plus 2A change in X, and change in x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared and those are our big three kinematic equations so now I'm going to go through what each variable means where v naught is the initial velocity v is the final velocity uh, you can use v i and v f if you like them it doesn't really matter it's just recognizing that they are the same thing uh, acceleration is a Time is t, and change in x, uh, also known as displacement, or change in position. Uh, you know, when dealing with kinematic equations, uh, you typically figure out your acceleration first, and you use whatever equation uh, based on your givens that gives you the best chance of having success. Uh, you could use any one you want, you get to choose which ones you want, but when using just basically uh, regular acceleration problems uh, based on constant velocity, uh, well actually this is none of these are constant velocity equations, these are constant acceleration problems, you use which one ever you need and you choose the best one for the situation you're dealing with. But in free fall, uh, we have a constant acceleration of 9.8 and it's usually best to find the time first. So now we're going to go right into free fall. Uh, in free fall, again, we, we mentioned again that uh, acceleration is the same thing as gravity in free fall. Acceleration is gravity, and gravity is 10 meters per second squared down, or 9.8 meters per second squared down. Acceleration's unit is always in meters per second squared. And let's imagine we've thrown a ball up into the air and it comes right back down. At the very peak of its motion, the velocity is instantaneously equal to zero. And the acceleration at that point is still gravity. Okay, it, it doesn't change. It's gravity is acting on the object at all times. So it's 9.8 meters per second squared, 10 meters per second squared down, all of it down. And so it, it's, it's unchanging, but the velocity at that point is instantaneous. So we have a constant acceleration in the downward direction. Uh, 9.8, it's easier for your math to use 10, but at that point, you know, it depends on how precise your, your answer has to be. And, and a lot of the things we did in AP Physics 1, especially on the AP exam, it didn't ask any more than basically having the variables. The, the numbers weren't as important. Now, if we were to graph the velocity of this object versus time, 
what we would get is an object that is slowing down. It starts off with a very, very large positive velocity. So we'll start it up here. And then it is going to begin to slow down the moment the moment we begin to it's gravity's acting on it until it reaches a point at the very top of the graph where it instantaneously stops and then it seems like the ball is begins to speed up again but it happens to do it in a negative direction and so the velocity of this ball the ball goes up it's slowing down comes to an instantaneous stop and then speeds up in a negative direction so at that point our acceleration should match that this is a negative slope for velocity versus time a negative slope which means our acceleration is negative and so we should have for our acceleration versus time graph a negative slope and so this is a quick review of everything kinematics everything unit conversions everything you needed the first week actually the first month of AP Physics 1 we're trying to get done very quickly here at the beginning of AP Physics C